Hey there, and welcome to the Unleash Your Greatness Within podcast. I'm TJ Hoisington, and in today's success interview, I was privileged to interview Tanisha Jackson Warner. And let me tell you something, it was a powerful interview. My passion and my mission to help you unleash your greatness within. My heart goes out to the underdogs, that's on their way. If you think you can, go from good to great. Okay, let's motivate. Tanisha is the author of the new book, The Big Stretch, 90 Days to Expand Your Dreams, Crush Your Goals, and Create Your Own Success. Now, before we jump into the interview, and it's awesome, before we jump into the interview, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking the subscribe button. And then also make sure you go up above and click the notification bell so that you're the first to be notified when I come out with a new success interview, which I've had many of and we'll have many more. Um, and also when I come out with a new inspirational and motivational video. So without any further ado, let's jump into this success interview with Tanisha Jackson Warner. Tanisha, welcome to the Unleash Your Greatness Within podcast. Hello, and thank you for having me, TJ. I'm thrilled to be here. It is great to have you on the show. I Let me tell you something, when your publicist and your team reached out to me, let me tell you something. I Listen, you've written a great book called The Big Stretch, 90 Days to Expand Your Dreams, Crush Your Goals, and Create Your Own Success. And let me just tell you, when I read the title and the subtitle, I thought, I've got to have her on the show. So you're oh, on the show. Thank today. you. Thank you. You bet. So, okay, let's jump into this. And one of the th first things that we do on the show is we like to get the backstory, the bio of our guests that we have. So why don't you share with us your story? Absolutely. So my name is Tanisha Jackson Warner. I am the CEO of Igami Group, which is a New York based multicultural marketing firm. Um, that is where I sit now. That's totally not where I started. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually started my career at IBM Global Services. And I was there for about five years. And I kind of knew early on, TJ, maybe about year two, that something was missing. Um, and by year three, it was a really big problem. I mean, I, 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 I guess you could say internally, I mm. knew mm, I hate my job, yeah. <laughs> which is a real big problem. Totally. But a bigger problem I had um, was I really didn't know what I wanted to do. So each week I was kind of on this cycle where on Sundays I would call my parents and complain. Mm. And one day my parents said, you know what, you can't call me anymore if you don't like your job, do something about it. And that was somewhat a little bit of my interruption of comfortable For sure. when I started to say, well, if I don't like my job and they're telling me I can't call them, what is it that I could possibly like or, or what am I passionate about? So I started to go on um, a purpose finding journey and mm. I was really just kind of keeping a journal on what my interests were, what my passions were. Um, something that I was very passionate about was entertainment and fashion. And believe it or not, um, an, a reality show episode led me to a big aha moment. Mm. So TJ, I'm not sure if you're familiar with P. Diddy's Making the Band. Do you remember that show that was on MTV years ago? V vague, vaguely. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the whole concept was P. Diddy would kind of cast and look for the next big artist. And there were these artists oh, who would right. do anything that to make it. Well, um, the artists that were on this show, he gave an assignment for them to read a book. And uh, the book was one of Russell Simmons' books. Yep. Um, I did that. And for me, it was a big aha because mm -hmm. I thought, you know what? I think I could be passionate about entertainment, pop culture. Um, and I really did kind of take that exercise seriously. And I said, I'm going to make a leap of faith here. Yeah. So I quit my job at IBM Global Services. I did that without having another job. Um, I ended up moving from Minneapolis to New York City. When I came here, I really didn't know a soul. Mm -hmm. I pitched myself 
to the head of Rush Communications. And again, Rush Communications is a major media and entertainment company, okay. um, owners at the time of Def Jam and Fat Fashions. And I ultimately landed an opportunity to work for no fee. So that was a part of my offer. Uh -huh. So it was, hey, can I, I learn from the founders and the executives of this company and I'm willing to work for no fee in exchange for an opportunity to learn. Uh -huh. And that was really my big trajectory Huge. sort of shift. Mm -hmm. um, I learned so much. I did start working for no fee, but within one year, I went from walking into that company, not knowing a soul to becoming general manager of Rush Communications. Oh, did you really? Wow. Yeah, I did. And um, from there, I started to work a lot on multicultural campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if you remember this campaign that was called Voter Die. And nope, it was a popular, yeah. it was a popular pop culture campaign to okay. get youth to uh, register to vote. Um, and so I was sort of on the forefront of that campaign, working with various teams. And I realized during this time that I was very passionate to work with brands, but to work with brands to make a difference in the world. So sure. really cause related campaigns. And ultimately that led me to founding Igami Group. Mm -hmm. um, and Igami Group, my firm is 12 years old. Mm -hmm. um, I love what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I also love inspiring and empowering dreamers. Mm -hmm. So along the way, um, you know, people will come to me and say, girl, you're crazy. You moved to New York. You didn't know a soul. You quit your job. Oh. Um, but it was something about that crazy where other dreamers were attracted to say, you know, I've had a dream as well. And where would you recommend for me to start? So I created a platform called The Dream Project, mm -hmm. and um, it's seven years old, and it's an initiative that's designed to support professionals and entrepreneurs really achieve their professional goals. So I know that was a long-winded way, but oh. I gave you at least the professional highlights. I didn't even give you the personal. Uh, I own a dog named Tully. He's my okay. only baby. Totally. Oh, okay. um, and All I'm right. married. I've been married for 10 years. And so that's a little bit about me. So I'll pause now. <laughs> And your, and your husband's name is Michael, and he's in the picture behind you. Is that right? He is. That's Michael right back there. Totally. That's an awesome <laughs> picture. So does Agami stand for anything? Is I didn't look into it deep enough to know if that, there was a meaning behind the word Agami. There is. So okay. if you look at the word Igami, E-G-A-M-I, I'll okay. say it again, E-G-A-M-I, it's actually image in reverse. And so the play Love there it. is we help you discover your brand image from the inside out. Yeah, so, from the inside out, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's where we start with a lot of the brands that we work on. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll come to us and they say, I want to create this great campaign. Right. And we always start by saying, what do you stand for? Yeah. Uh, what's your purpose? And if you don't know that, then we need to look inward first uh, before we can sort of do an external campaign. That is awesome. Okay, so you triggered a couple of things. I just want to highlight for the listeners here, a couple of distinctions. Okay. Number one, you called your parents a bunch of times. They finally got fed up with you calling them. They said, don't call us anymore. Now, I assume in the tone of voice and the spirit in which you said that in, that your parents love you. Yes. It, was, it, it, had, it had nothing to do with a lack of support. Is that fair to say? No, not at all. If, if anything, I think that putting that stand in the ground to say no more, that was out of love as well. Yeah, because sometimes I mean. you exactly. have to give tough love. Ex no, it's true. So I just want to let remind the audience, right? Um, that uh, it's probably fair to say that wasn't an attack on you personally. It was just trying to move, <laughs> uh, move you forward. It was trying to shake me up. Okay. So listen to those that care about you and love you. You said you took a, a, a leap of faith and you worked at no fee. I know that when I went to work uh, with Tony Robbins back in 1999, um, I took a significant uh, income hit, right? It went down considerably, but I thought to myself the same thought process you had, which any listeners listening to, it is vital. You Listen, you can learn from your own mistakes or you can go work in an industry or in an area that coincides and harmonizes with your passion and not have to make a lot of those mistakes and learn. And for me, that was Tony Robbins. For you, it was your own experience. And I just want to say to the listeners, being willing to trust 
your vision enough that for a season you'll mm-hmm. work for no fee or work for minimal fee, I think is the investment that you have to make to succeed. It's just part of the deal. That's what really good, TJ. Yeah, I agree with you. It, it's yeah. one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. That decision to, you know, it, it was about a servant's mindset as well. Totally, totally. So that decision to look outside of myself and not think, you know, what's in it for me in terms of cash alone, um, but, uh, you know, what's in it for me in terms of what type of knowledge can I gain totally. just from being around leaders of an industry? Because in doing that, you knew inherently long term that you would find more fulfillment. And look at you, yeah. 12, 12 years later, things are <laughs> rocking, you're doing great. Okay, so that's awesome. So, all right, explain to me how someone can determine or what kind of dreamers there are. What's your concept? You say, what uh, what type of dreamer are you? Explain that. Yes, way. so um, I'll give you a little bit of background. So I, I told you that I created the Dream Project seven years ago. And I've gone across the nation speaking to large audiences. Mm -hmm. And in the past three years alone, I've spoken to 185,000 dreamers. And when I speak with these individuals, oftentimes I would spend time with them after the engagements. And sometimes I felt that everyone sort of felt pressure to walk one type of journey. Um, And I came up with this assessment, number one, to say everyone's dream journey is unique. So just because, you know, your brother is an amazing entrepreneur, that doesn't mean that you have to become an entrepreneur to be a dreamer. Um, And so this assessment, I profile different dreamer types, and there are five different types. Mm -hmm. Um, One is a career dreamer. And so a career dreamer is someone who they actually want to work for an organization. They want to work for a company. But for them, it's very important that where they work, they need to find fulfillment by mapping their purpose and profession. So it's work with meaning. And I call those careerpreneur dreamers. Um, Another one is a make it happen dreamer. And this is the person that you know they've never worked for a person a day in their lives or when they do, they're quickly fired. So my husband is indeed a make it happen dreamer. He's only had like two jobs in his whole life. Mm -hmm. And both of them, he was fired very quickly um, (laughs) because he was, he felt constrained to put in a box. He just was not designed to work inside of the infrastructure. He wants to make his own calls, um, his own schedule. But you know what? He had the stomach for the risk that came with that type of entrepreneurial journey. Mm. So make it happen, dreamers. They usually can stomach a lot of risk and they're willing to do that in terms to make their own shots. Um, Another one is a hobby dreamer. So a hobby dreamer is someone who may have a passion, whether it's writing, cooking, but they do not have a desire to put the responsibility on their passion to take care of them and their families. And I think that's a very responsible person. However, they want to find a way to find fulfillment through their hobby. So I call that a hobby dreamer. Got it. The next one is an activist dreamer. And um, in my book, I actually interviewed Tarana Burke, the founder of the Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. And so an activist dreamer is someone who has dedicated their life's calling to really answer some of the problems that face our world. So in interviewing Tarana, she said, you know what, Tanisha, since I was a little girl, if I saw an injustice in the world, I couldn't sit back. Like I was the person that would go home and say, mom, we have to do something. So you usually can spot those activist dreamers. They are either starting nonprofits, working for nonprofits, but really dedicating their life um, to improve our world. And then the last one is a CEO dreamer. Um, And so a CEO dreamer is someone who has, you know, worked within a corporate structure, but they've always said at some point, I'm going to venture out and use these skills and test the entrepreneurial waters. So those are the different dreamer types that I talk about in the book. And I even have a quiz. If you're curious to know Mm -hmm. which dreamer type or, you know, maybe there are multiple types that you identify with. I was going to ask that question. Actually, yeah, yeah, you can actually take a quiz. And so it's it's really about providing the dreamer with tools to know thyself. 
and really giving them the freedom to say, it's my journey and I'm going to choose a path that's unique for me. You know what I love about that is that's awesome that it could be more than one. Cause I was listening to it. I'm thinking I'm probably, I assume this, I haven't taken your assessment yet, but I assume I'm probably a make it happen kind of, but I'm probably a CEO. I'm probably a piece yeah. of both of those. But I, but then part of me is like, maybe I'm also an activist because I'm very purpose driven, right? I would think mm-hmm. the me, I would think the meter or the scale on an <laughs> activist person is really high. Exactly. No, that is really, really cool. And by the way, um, your book, The Big Stretch, I went through it. What I was blown away with is how many exercises you have to narrow down your dreams, to narrow down your goals, to put a plan of action together, right? You put a lot of tool, actual tools in here with some cool stories and metaphors and so forth. So you did a good job with this. Thank you. Yeah. I spent a year of my life just really pouring into that that book that you're holding. So the idea was to make sure that we provided or make sure that I provided, I say we because so many, so many dreamers are featured in the book. So I, yeah. I can't say we, so many people interviewed for the book, but we wanted to provide a roadmap that was beyond inspiration. So I think we can all get a self-help book. We can all, you know, get that inspirational moment. But once you're inspired, I wanted to make sure that there were tools to say, now get in action. So it's a hybrid of inspiration, but action oriented but actions and strategies <laughs> and ideas that can propel mm-hmm. you forward oh, nice job you did a great job with that okay so let's talk about the concept of declare your dream what's your yes. thought about that so um here's what here's the approach that I take in the book the, it's okay. broken out into four phases phase okay. one it's all about dreaming Um, Phase two is about designing an infrastructure for that dream. Phase three Mm -hmm. is being willing to go out and dare to make that dream happen. And the Mm -hmm. last one is about the doing and doing for the long term. So the plan that you're referencing is actually in phase one and it's in the dreaming phase. So, you know, for your listeners and viewers that are watching this, I start with having you be okay with dreaming again. And you'll be surprised, TJ, at how we get so buried in our day-to-day lives that we're not carving out the time to imagine. So Steve, totally. Steve Jobs was known for his daily walks. Mm-hmm. And um, you know his family members and Steve talked about the reason why I would take these walks is that was the place that he received his ideas. That's right. So I opened up with really the importance of as a viewer, for you to give yourself that time to imagine. And once you give yourself that time to imagine, there are a couple weeks just kind of dedicated to what ideas came through. And hopefully there will be one idea that's sort of your burning idea that you know, it's my season to work on this particular idea now. Mm -hmm. And what I would do at that point is have you go from, okay, how can this idea start to take shape? Like if there were some steps that you could do over 90 days, what are some steps that tangible steps we can do on realizing that dream? And so it's almost taking it out of the pie in the sky to, okay, I got it. This is what I want to accomplish. I'm going to declare this vision. So you, when I declare it, you declare it at almost a year level. It's a one year level. And then from that, That's sort of the inspiration that that you'll work towards. But then it's, where do I get started today? Mm -hmm. And then I have the reader actually break it out week by week of actions that they can take over a 90 day period to start working towards that vision. So it can be something, you know, I'll give an example, you know, perhaps you are, you have a love of fashion and fitness and you would like to become almost like an influencer in that space. Right. Um, let's say it's a hobby dreamer. Well, if you wanted to become an influencer or thought leader in that particular space, you need to create some assets. Um, and so I would challenge that person to say, what can you do to start positioning yourself as an expert? Maybe you launch a blog, you know, maybe you become an expert where you're doing podcast interviews, mm-hmm. you know, so I really challenge the reader to think about how do I work towards that vision now? And you map your own goals 
-hmm. but you also are accountable to those goals week by week in the book. Yeah, it's very clear how you lay it out. Uh, So I think a really important distinction here is that when you have those ideas, you you brought up Steve Jobs, for example, you Mm -hmm. go on those walks and I have the tendency when I go on long five to seven mile jogs or runs, right, on a regular basis, I tend to get a lot of ideas on those runs. I find that I also do when I'm driving in a car, I just randomly, going from one point to another, I'll get a lot of ideas. So everybody has a different place where they have these thoughts that they can act on. I would just encourage the listeners to listen to that inner voice, that inner conscience, uh, because sometimes I think it's easy. The thought will come in and we'll just let it go in one side and out the other and not really give thought to it. So I say, entertain that thought, play it out in your mind. And then I love the fact that you end on action. You see, we have what's called in our curriculums and so forth, something that's called the BSA results formula. Okay. So this is basically it. And and it's uh, it's sort of similar to yours. Yours You see, I have my pen out. I'm I'm a forever learner. So I got my pen out. So B? The, so you're, yeah, so B stands for belief. And, and you got to have the right mindset, right? And that's the attitude, the mindset, the vision, the purpose. All that would be under the B. Okay. Then, then you have your S, so BSA. So S as in skills and strategies. You got to okay. go like you did. You, you worked in an industry of something, in an area you had interest and you learned the skills and the strategies to navigate in that industry. That's really important that you, the education side of it, the knowledge side of it is really important. And then you already brought this up because it's in your book, right? Is the A, which is action. So you have beliefs, skills, and strategies, and then you have action and nothing happens without action let me tell you as a young teenager i learned this that when tony robbins said on one of those early cassette tapes that he put out in the early days he said what's the difference from the person that walks into deport you have an idea that walks in a department store and you see your idea on the shelf he said what's the difference from you and that other person it was your idea you'd never seen it before but you had the same idea and tony robbins would say the only difference between that person and the next person is that they did something about it. They began, Mm. I noticed in your book, you talk about breaking things down into smaller goals. And we might get to that in just a second. But but I do want to say in terms of declaring um, your vision or your dream, I just want to emphasize, I've taught for many years and under the tutelage of Bob Mawad and others and Dennis Waitley and so forth, only share goals with people that have an inherent interest to see you succeed or that Mm. have a skill level that can help enable you with additional insights and ideas that can keep you on that path, right? To just throw, I get that you actually, let me read this in the book because I think there's truth on both sides. So I'm on page, let's see, 53. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to get this. I'm going to your page right now too. All right. So on page 53, Exercise 2.5. Do you see that? Yes. So, and, and I agree with the research, but I have a little distinction at the end of it, and I want to know your thoughts on it. Okay. You say here, the Association for Talent Development, ATD, did a study on accountability and found that you have a 65% chance of completing a goal if you officially tell someone else that you're committing to reach that goal. So you say, choose three people you trust to trust. tell about your one year dream project and your 90 day stretch plan. So I, we agree. I think, okay. I think there is truth that um, publicly saying, this is a goal I'm going to work on, does give a certain um, source of motivation. But I would say that motivation is... Um, a push from behind sometimes instead of mm-hmm. a pull from vision. So make sure that you only share your goals with people that can help the, the people you trust, as you say in the book, the people you mm-hmm. trust, right? Any it's, thoughts on that? It's very important. It's, it's what I define as um, a dream champion. So I mm-hmm. talk about a dream champion in the book and the definition of a dream champion and how you know if you have shared your dream with the dream champion mm-hmm. is they will reflect back to you 
your potential to achieve the vision that you've just shared with them. So even if you can't see, you know, you may have this vision, but even if you can't see yourself as being qualified enough or ready or credentialed enough to do Mm -hmm. it, Mm -hmm. your dream champions, they're going to reflect back to you the best of who you're becoming. They're going to reflect back to you you got this, you can do this. Think about this, TJ, when you did that already proves that you have the ability to do this. When you leave the presence of a dream champion, you're energized. You, You think, you know what? I can do this. I can do this. You just caught a glimpse of yourself doing it. So you need to know who those dream champions are and that's where you wanna share that vision. I love people like that too. You know, I read a book, On Oprah many years ago, she had a guest on named Debbie Ford. I'm going off my memory here. Okay. Debbie Ford, she's since passed away. I'm sad to say because she did some great work, but she had just come out with her first book called The Dark Side of the Light Dreamers. And I thought, that's weird. But the way she was talking- What was the name of it? It was called The Dark Side of the the Dark Side of the Light Dreamers. Okay. Debbie, Debbie, Debbie Ford. Anyway, I thought- that's an interesting title. But I, as I listened to her, I was like, oh my gosh. Well, later in life, she became kind of a coach in many respects for Oprah. And uh, she was on Oprah's show many times since that. But I remember she said something on that show that caused me to go buy the book. I read the book. I got to page 50. And on page 50, I got the aha moment that I needed at that time. And this is a reminder for, I think, everybody. She says, And by the way, it is on page 50. I actually pulled it out 10 years later to see. I've been telling the story. I've been telling the story. It's on page 50. So about a year ago, I went back to the book and I go, oh, it is on page 50. I'm so so going to get this book. Anyway, no, no. So she said, she said, when you see greatness in someone else, it is your own greatness that you are seeing. Because if you didn't have the greatness within, you wouldn't be able to recognize that quality in someone else. Oh, I love it. it. So that moved me. So I love that we have people around us and we should associate with people around us. Number one, believe that you have greatness within, but it's also great to have people on your team that also believe in you and, you know, kind of give you those ideas and those strategies to move you forward. So I think that's great insight on your part, Tanisha. That's awesome. All right. So let's lead to the the, the negative side here, <laughs> which is identifying dream bullies. Yes. Woo! And so just like you have a dream champion yeah. who I just described, you share that dream, you feel energized. They reflect back to you, your possibilities that this can mm-hmm. happen. A dream bully, you almost get the opposite experience with them. So you share that vision with them and they start to reflect back to you Are you sure about that? Um, You know, you've never done that before, but what if this could happen? They're magnifying the fears. They're magnifying all of the potential obstacles. And if you share dreams in those spaces enough, you're robbing your dream. You're going to walk away, perhaps convincing yourself, you know what, maybe I should put this on the shelf. Maybe this is not the time. Maybe I'm not qualified. So you have to pay attention to the experience that you're getting when you share that vision, safeguard your dreams, safeguard your visions. And if you want them to have the chance to thrive or to come to life, only share them in those trusted places. Love it. And I'll say this, sometimes people, you know, you automatically think dream bully, because I identify them as dream bullies. And you think it's someone who intentionally wants to stop you, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes our dream bullies are those very close to us. It's family ones. It's those that love us the most. Because the individuals that love you the most, they actually are going to want to protect you the most as well from getting hurt, from getting harmed. Their intention is often good. That's right. Yes. But you know, what dream have you ever known be accomplished that was completely in your comfort zone zip code? Totally. Not many. So yeah. you're going to have to expand and reach that. beyond that comfort zone. And you're going to have to be okay with the risk that's associated with that. And so, you know, those around you that love you, they may start coming to protect you. And before you know it, the person that loves you the most, they become your dream bully. 
So my best friend, TJ, is my grandmother. Mm -hmm. I talk to her every day. (laughs) And she is the biggest dream bully I've ever met in my life. (laughs) And I've learned that. And I don't share with her my dreams. I don't. You know, when it was time for me to leave my job and I knew I didn't have another job, the last person I could afford to tell was my grandmother because I knew she was going to tell me, you're crazy. That was a good, good job. I worked so long to make, you know, a third of what you made. You're never going to find another opportunity like that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't share with her that dream at that stage because it was, it was in an infancy stage, the dream. And I knew she had the potential to kill it. Um, And even bless her soul, even to this day, TJ, you want to laugh? I tell her this new book is coming out called The Big Stretch, right? She Uh says, I know it's not going to be as good as Michelle Obama's book. And I said, well, (laughs) are you serious? That's what she says. I can send you a video. She didn't know I was videotaping her. And I said, well, it's a very different book than Michelle. You know, Michelle shared her story. I want to share my story. She says, well, I know a lot of people want to hear Michelle's story, but I can't think about one or two people who want to hear your story. Mm. Awful. Awful. (laughs) You know what, Tanisha? I've been there too. I have a mother who loves me, is a saint, <laughs> is awesome. But when I was writing my first book, if you think you can, I yeah. had lost I had lost everything financially 15 years or whatever. 15 years ago, um, we were living in the basement of my mom's house. I had two kids at the time. She she's just was shaking her head. And I told her, as we were losing everything, I'm going to go write a book. And she said, what? You're going to do what? And right, she, she couldn't see the vision. But in my darkest moment with my wife's agreement, I sat in the back seat of my car and I wrote, if you think you can, in a, in a grocery store parking lot. And within three months of that book being published in 2005, it became an international bestseller. Oh, and that, but man. here's the thing. But here, I only say that to teach a principle that you've already laid out, which is huge is number one, only share, if you only share goals with people um, that won't kill your dream. And if you know that someone will, it's just better not to share with them. The beautiful thing was, what do you think she says today? I've written five books now. So what do you think she says today? She'll say, so when is your next book coming? Ah. She's adopted the belief. So my second (laughs) principle of, of, of this part of the conversation is, Sometimes you have to express your dream or go after it and take action and get some evidence and, 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 and see some results without telling those people and let the action speak louder than your words. Oh, that's good. Right? Because sometimes people get ahead of themselves by speaking too much when, man, if they'll just slow down and go to work quietly and keep the fire in the belly, I'm telling you what, then all of a sudden you'll come out and you'll change, you'll change the perception of everyone around you. I'm sure, Tanisha, when you came out with your first book and other successes that you've had, the people around you start to look at you differently, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. You know, very much so a different look than when it was an idea or a concept. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. So those are key. My, my, you, you triggered another thought. My daughter is in kind of, we're careful about social media in our home mm-hmm. and we put limits on it, but she's kind of an up and coming YouTuber. In fact, I think, I think she has, you not just YouTuber, but TikTok and, and uh, Instagram, I think total, she's about 30,000 followers at the time oh of this. Oh my God. But I the, love it. No, no, no. My, 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 my point. Oh, her name. <laughs> her name is Kyla. Kyla Hoisington. Anyway. Okay, Kyla. Yeah, okay. Kyla. I'm going to look her up. Okay, Hoisington. she's a gem. Yeah, yeah. So on Instagram and TikTok, you'll see a lot of her on there. But she's going to have thirty thousand and one friends because I'm following her. Love it. You're going to be a great <laughs> friend. So that'd be awesome. So my my point is, she came home the other day, and she said, "I'm so frustrated, Dad." Some of the kids at school, she's in eighth grade right now. She goes, some of the kids at school call me a wannabe. Now, Tanisha, my knee-jerk reaction is whatever. These relationships aren't going to be around when you're 20, 25 years. Let it go. But as the day went on, I started thinking about the concept of wannabe. And my thought kind of went here. Now, this is the first time I've shared this because it Hmm. just happened a couple days ago. I thought... 
isn't it great to be a wannabe? <laughs> Shouldn't we all want to be a wannabe? I get that in elementary school or junior high, it might not be cool. You might, right? But it's that spirit of a wannabe that drove me to go work with Tony Robbins and drove me to want to later in life become a motivational speaker. It's that wannabe drive that moved me. So I'm going to say to the audience, be a wannabe. It's okay. I love it. I know. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, because people will try to shut you down. It's their way. Les Brown always says, you know this, but Les Brown always says, um, when people don't have a vision for their own life, they tend to not have a vision for you. Mm, that's and very so, good. So just be careful. Okay. Um, all right. What is your, I love the concept of 90 day stretch goal. Explain that to our audience. Yes. So before, when we were talking about the importance of casting a vision, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was um, in phase one of dreaming. The 90 day action plan that's featured in the book, mm -hmm. that's what I was referring to earlier when I talked about how do you take that vision oh, and yeah. break it down into achievable goals. Oh, and so inside of your 90 day action plan, I'm going to have you break that vision down into attainable mm -hmm. goals across mm -hmm. each week. So it's 12 weeks. Um, inside of the book in the 90 days. And so you set a goal and it needs to be measurable because otherwise, how are you going to hold yourself accountable? Right. Um, and that's what's going to make your 90 day action plan. And there's a grid inside the book. There's also a downloadable yep, exercise yep. where you have the space to write the weekly goal. And we kind of have you work backwards. So you have your one year vision, then you have what is it that you need to accomplish over the 90 days, think about it. Companies do this all the time. They're mm -hmm. working on quarterly sure goals. Yep. So what are your quarterly goals? I do it inside of my company. Mm -hmm. Our quarterly goals are lining up with our one-year vision. Love it. And then I take our quarterly goals. And if, we're any, if there's any chance of us making those quarterly goals, I need to be intentional about my actions week after week after week. And how are they mapping back to the 90-day goal? I love that. Um, a lot of people, when I hear speakers get up, they say, you got to have a five-year plan, a 10-year plan. And I think that's important, but it's equally, if not more important to have your 90-day plan, right? And yes. so, because that is, like you said, measurable, it's attainable. And one thing you get when you do shorter stint goals is you get instant feedback, right? You, you accomplish that one goal and there's something to celebrate. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a feeling of progress. So, just make sure that you have those intermediate, shorter term goals. Okay, next question. This might be a little different, but being a speaker, you might have an answer to this. So I'm gonna throw this out there for you. Okay. Is there anything you share with your audiences as a pattern that tends to cause, like what did I write here? A principle that people respond positively to. For example, I'll just give an example, so I'll set it up for you. So Charlie Tremendous Jones once told me at the time when I was trying to decide what to do with my career years ago, it would have been 1999, 98, 99. Um, I happened to call him late at night. I happened to find his number on an old cassette tape. It was all happenstance. That's a whole separate story. But on that phone call, I was stressed. I was running a small business that was doing well, but I wasn't living my dream. Just like with you at IBM, right? You were paying the bills, you were doing the, the work, the job, you were being responsible, but there was still that part of your heart that belonged somewhere else. And um, I remember he turned to me that night over the phone and he said, TJ, you were not born to make right or wrong decisions. You were born to make decisions and then make them right. And what he was saying mm -hmm. was, it's not that there's not something, they're not right or wrong decisions in life. There are but what he was really saying in the spirit of what he was saying is that oftentimes we get paralyzed out of fear that we don't make any decision at all. And I've thought about that. And as I've shared that quote, TJ, you're not born to make right or wrong decisions. You're born to make decisions and then make them right. I've shared with at least a thousand audiences over the years. I've been doing this a long time. And let me tell you something. When I say that quote in an audience of 300, a thousand people, whatever, you can see all the heads in the audience go down with their pen 
And I just inherently know as I speak now that I will re repeat that so that people can get the full quote. Have you found as you've been teaching that there's certain principles that you teach or quotes that you share that you feel like people get by and large an aha moment out of? What have you found? Yeah, there, there are a couple of those things. Good, good. Um, so one is I, I usually have this tip where I tell people that dreamers kind of live in a mindset that mm -hmm. they know that there's always more. And so they're really looking to say, what's my next area of evolving? What's my next level to stretch and expand? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things that can potentially stop you from continuing to explore is something that my mentor actually said to me. And I would remind the audience that the greatest robber of an extraordinary life is a really, really good life. And oh, so say that again, say that again. <laughs> the greatest robber of an extraordinary life is a really, really good life. Oh. And, you know, I said that in the room um, of some of the leading um, Fortune 100 women executives mm -hmm. in the nation a few years back. And when I when I said that particular thing, the greatest robber of your extraordinary can be your good. And yeah, I could just totally. see it going off because for these ladies, it's like, yeah, you know, I'm running major fortune 100 and fortune 500 companies. Why should I continue to stretch? But mm -hmm. what if that's just your good and there's still another level of extraordinary? Love it. Love it. The, yes. easier, the, the easier it is to be good, the more difficult it is to be great. I, that's your concept right there. I love it. There's one other one too that yes. usually will get tears out of an audience. And so um, I remind dreamers that you, it's important that you actually spend time with the dreamer in the mirror. And by that, mm -hmm. I mean doing the soul searching to say, what I'm doing today, is this still my dream or was this my dream of yesterday? Was this my dream that my mom had for me? And I usually tell a story of a great friend that I had that made it to the top of his game at Warner Music Group. He was representing this Grammy Award winning artist. And one night I saw him at an event that we were both doing mm -hmm. and I looked at him and I said, Jojo, you are standing in an expired dream. Oh. And this grown man just started to bawl. Mm. And he later said to me, T, I knew my time was up, but who leaves the game at the top of the music business? Mm. And so, you know, challenging your viewers to, to say, are you standing in an expired dream? Love it. You know, you, you got to do the work to make sure when it's time to upgrade, when it's time to expand into your next, that you're willing to do that. And if you hold on to a dream that's expired or that's done, you know, you can't move into that new territory of what's true for you today. I love that. Tanisha, that was rich. Um, which requires people to have faith mm -hmm. to take the leap, as you already mentioned, and trust the process before the evidence shows itself, right? The Absolutely. evidence in the, in the beginning, I've always thought of it this way for, a, for someone who has a dream, the evidence in the beginning is the dream it, because it's so oh, real. Oh, that's so good. You know what I mean? It's so real from within that that is the evidence. And, and you and I both know that whatever you dwell on, you're going to attract and move in direction and attract opportunities and resources that harmonize with that. It's, there's, a, there's a power there that has been around for a long time that if we'll align ourselves with it, we'll be much more successful going forward. All right, Tanisha, any last thoughts? We're winding down, but any last thoughts, concepts, ideas that you'd like to share with the audience? And then I'm going to have you share, hey, how can they get in touch with you? What would you like to promote or anything like that? Well, I guess, you know, as we get ready to kick off 2020, you know, everyone is always going to do the soul searching. And usually you're going to have those New Year's resolutions, whether yep. it's in the yep. fitness or health category. You know, my challenge to all that is listening and viewing today, it's really think about what is that heart desire for you? Yes. Um, what is that dream? And I want to challenge you to stretch 
towards that dream. And you may say, you know, individuals come to me and they say, what if I don't want to stretch anymore? Like I've taken so many risks. Why, why do it? And my answer to you is there is a version of yourself that's waiting for you to meet yourself, a greater, more powerful version that's waiting for you to meet yourself. And the only way you're going to access that version of yourself is through your willingness to stretch. So my last concept is, you know, why stretch? Because there's another version of yourself that's waiting to meet you. And if you don't do it, what version will you never meet? Mm, I love it. Wow, Tanisha, that was great. Um, your concepts are on point, and I knew there was a reason why I had you come on the show. Uh, oh, you've got thank you. you've got some rich concepts and a good heart. And one of these days we'll meet in person. Yes, uh, maybe we'll meet Michael. I'm coming too. to Seattle. When you I'm come, you let Seattle. me know. I want to come. You shoot me a message, and I'll come. <laughs> we'll come meet up or something. Anyway, thanks for being on the show. How could people, first of all, let me just remind everybody, her book is The Big Stretch. So make sure that you get that book. It's nice and thick. And there's, oh my goodness, so many stories, examples, and action steps, strategies, ideas, and tools that are really good. So make sure that you get her book, The Big Stretch. Um, and also, how can people get in touch with you? What would, what, what would you like to share with them? Oh. Well, first and foremost, um, you can visit the big stretch book dot com. Oh, and okay. that's where you can get all of our latest news about the book, what we're doing. We'll um, I'd there. encourage all the viewers to go there to take the dreamer assessment. You can take that right now to understand what type of dreamer you are. If you take that assessment and you found that information valuable, then I would highly encourage you to take the next step and purchase the book. And maybe even oh, start okay. you a group to do the stretch with in 2020. So um, that's one thing that I would encourage everybody to do. What was the do. website? What was the website again? www.thebigstretchbook.com. And for me, I am um, on all of the Instagram handles is at Tanisha J. Warner. So you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn with that handle. And I'm always sharing what I'm up to, what cities I'm going to. And I love to engage with audiences. So follow me so that I can actually follow you um, and we can start engaging into a community. I'm tapping into your your potential community here, TJ. Totally. And I thank and you we've for got sharing. A great, no, we've got a great <laughs> and a big community. So they're going to love your message today. You were great having on the show. And so let me just say this. May the best of your past be the worst of your future. I wish you the very best. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you, TJ. Thank you so much. You bet.